Nikos. Hello and welcome everyone to this Marvel Avengers video. This time it's time to address your take, not mine. In this video, we're going to be talking about how Mighty Thor will save Marvel Avengers. Now, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for this video to bring more Marvel Avengers content and we can get talking more about the future of Marvel Avengers as past, present, and future and what we look forward to with this game. So, currently, Marvel Avengers has a roster boasting of nine heroes. Of the nine heroes, only three of them are female. With the addition of Jane Foster, the Mighty Thor, we will finally have our fourth Ben Fatale and finally be able to go on missions with all women cast. Now, everyone wants to say this is a dead game, and I don't think that's actually fair to the game. Uh, I don't think it's dead. There's still hundreds of people that play this game. Now, the number is smaller than what you would expect for something of this property. Now, I will not sit here and dispute that at all. You are absolutely correct if you're thinking, yo, Sensei, it might not be dead, but like, this is the Avengers and like, you said hundreds of people play this game, but this should be in the thousands. And yeah, uh, a game of this, this magnitude, this genre should be at a higher clip than what it currently is. That is just... That is just the truth. That's the gospel. Okay, nobody sit here and say anything about that. But it's not dead. But it's also not in a good place. Um, they have made a lot of improvements to the game since launch. It is definitely uh, something worth playing at this moment in time. If you can have some fun with it, jump back into it. But with the rotating events, uh, the same ones over and over, and it's like it's been almost two been two years actually. So two years is coming up this uh this September. It'll have been two years and four events. Uh four additional heroes and a two year span. So again, it won't exactly be that two year date until September. So if you wanted to, you know, count victories here, you can say, hey, the game Within the first year, got you three heroes and four events to play. And then after that, there will also a raid. Two raids. One was a rework of a mission uh, added to the a time trial. Uh, then there's the, uh, the, the amazing Monica boss fight. I think that should be giving uh, some kudos on that. Then there's you know the raid that came with Wakanda, but the raid is not solo player based. You actually have to do that raid with other people, and that, to my opinion, makes the raid less uh, less desirable. I think it makes it really less desirable. If you ask me, if you, if you ask me, like, do I look forward to playing the, the 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 claw raid? I'm gonna tell you no, and I'm gonna be honest with you. I still haven't beat it. It's hard to get people to actually play the raid with and to you know get the raid completed so it's not something that's on my list but does that does that mean the game is in a bad spot no it just means the game just discovered his identity recently and with the current sale you know right now is a time for the game it's under a microscope can this game be developed into something that we all will be proud of and want to talk about going forward that's currently where we are right now so, will Jane Foster, the Mighty Thor edition, improve this game's fan reception? And, you know, will it get people talking? I think it, that all depends on how they make Jane. If Jane comes in playing and feeling like Thor, the, you know, woman Thor, some people are going to be really pissed about that. They're not going to find that you know like they they're not gonna find her that appetizing because Thor's already broken that's why I'm hoping I'm hoping in their blog they mentioned that Jane would uh you know she would have the the electricity you know she's she would be willing millionaire for 
but she would also have her own ultimate, her own assault, her own heroic. She would feel like how Kate is to Hawkeye, which is promising um, because you want that. That's what you want. You want to get that from her. You want to get that from She-Hawk and any other character that has a counterpart. You want those characters to feel unique, but different, you know? And I feel like we're at a point right now where this game is finally becoming something, you know what I'm saying? And I would love to see whatever it the future defines itself as concrete and the roster grows. Because at the moment in time, it's extremely underwhelming. And I know, like I said, you guys, your take is that this is going to, you know, Mighty Jane is going to save the game, which it's hard to say because, like, fan engagement is the only thing that this game is living off right now, you know? I, they already admitted that Square was going to do much of a profit. Um, the merger, we don't know what's going on with Embracer Group. So we don't know what's the uh, step there. Embracer has a relationship with Disney, as I put in a previous video. So it could be a situation where it's just like they're waiting to see how excited we are about new content before they continue new content, you know? Because it's like, why would we rent the, the license to you, you know, Embracer? Why would we let you guys keep up the Avengers IP and the Guardians IP when, like, no one's you know interested in what you currently have going and you know because this is this is business it's not it's not it's not friendship it's show business you know what i mean so they're gonna want to make sure they have the best product out so it's not the fact in my eyes that i'm thinking jane foster is going to save the franchise it's just to me honestly is that jane foster is like the last hope like she is basically what's what's gonna be at the end of the day what we're gonna we're gonna measure the future of this game off the hype the reception if it rolls into she hawk with the modok fight the new modok fight returning for of uh, aim iron like i it was an aim island that will measure up what we perceive of this game going forward you know that's where, that's where we are that's that's just that's the standard how are we gonna look at this game how they're gonna look at this game from a financial standpoint will be all based on the release of jane foster so it's not far-fetched for you guys to be in the comics in comment sections and on reddit and you know talking about how excited you are because that's what this game needs if you want to see this game succeed you want to see Jane Foster succeed. You know, they go they go hand in hand at this point. They're inseparable. <laughs> the future of this game rests on the shoulders of Jane Foster, the Modoc content, and of course, potentially the She-Hulk content. That would be the future of this game. I'm not so confident, but at the same time, like I, they already have the assets created, the way they make their characters. They've, they've been really good at that. Um, I feel like it's not the release of content that's been issuing them. It's the, it's the consistency of content. It's like they'll put something out and it's cool and it's exciting. But it's like that's not 100 to 300 hours, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta, you gotta do more than that, fella. So, they have uh, shown me that they're not the greatest at producing that. So we will see. We will actually have to see how it works. Like I said, that's not their strong suit. They are not great at that. But, you know, they are, the teams are divided. They're no longer doing the full, the full team on um, this game. So there's just Wagner and a few uh, other loyalists. So it's, uh, the game is definitely in the hands of people who want to make more art content on this and want to expand this game's content. So it's not a situation where we got a bunch of people, you know, like the whole, like, I want to say, I don't, I just like, loyalist is probably the best word I can use here. 
we got a bunch of loyalists, you know, a bunch of people that's really believing the Avengers, uh, the game and what they created there. So those are the people who are still working on this game at this moment. And I do think that that team will will produce results. But I'm also not exactly sure if it starts with Jane. Yeah, but again, this is a video about your take, not mine. If you ask me, I think what's this game it consists on the villain drops. The so it's all about Modoc's boss fight. If that boss fight is tight and it's inclusive, and we all can play it, and it's not like some shit that you gotta have like a whole team to do, and it, like it's gonna be tight. It's gonna it's gonna make it's gonna make it. It's gonna make the game. And for me personally, it's gonna make me want to come back to it. Like. And do a lot more content with it. Having Jane is also part of it. Hero roster has to increase. But the, the rogues gallery in this game is pathetic. It's just pathetic. You don't have instances where you can fight multiple people. It's Taskmaster. It's Maestro. It's Abomination. And uh, it's Monica. And then you got Claw and Crossbones stuck behind the raid. And then you got the Super Adaptoid stuck in the Operation RDOLT. So, when it just comes to like straight just fighting villains and fighting mobs, like they don't really have the best rogues gallery. So, if they're going to actually take it to the next level, that's going to be the area for me where I feel like this game is either going to survive or it's going to fail. But that's my opinions. Uh, and this is the first episode of Your Take Not Mine. Hopefully you guys like this. Um, if you do, I'll definitely bring this back some more. And we can talk more about your thoughts on Marvel Avengers. Thank you all for watching. You guys are awesome. Just kick ass as always. And I'll catch you guys next time.